Hey, it's John Bear. In this episode, I'm going to talk to Ragnar Olafsson, who goes by the name of Raki. Raki is an incredibly prolific musician who has put out multiple albums and toured the world many, many times, and he's my brother. Our talk touches upon how to discover your passion. We also talk about the importance of defining your own rich life. Success often gets associated with having lots of money, but success really means to be able to do what you love. We also talk about the delicate balance of being a creator and having to be a personal salesman, selling your own craft. We then talk about how creators can go about finding their audience on the internet. This one is amazing, folks. Please help me in welcoming my brother, Raki. For everybody listening, when was the moment you decided that you wanted to be a musician? Well, uh, the moment I started becoming a musician, it happened gradually. Uh, and I went through all these phases. Um, but at the core, it's always been a matter of creating. As long as I create, then I'm, I'm, I'm happy, I'm content. And I started out as a kid, I was always drawing. And people always thought that I would become a an artist one day because this was all that occupied my mind is everything I did the whole time and then sometimes in my in my early teens the focus shifted from drawing to writing and then I had mm -hmm. that you know my mind for the next 10 years to write books so this was my this was my mission in life write books and this mission to write books made me go into my uh, early 20s uh, Hemingway phase as I, as I call it where I travel the world and try to get into trouble and adventures just so I could have some stories to write about. Like Hemingway, mm. he went, you know, deep sea fishing and he went to fight in the Spanish Civil War and did all these <laughs> things so we could have some stories to tell. The point being, like Hemingway, he did not just sit around and wait for inspiration. He went out and got it. Mm. And this, uh, so this pushed me to travel to India, travel the Himalayas on a motorcycle, uh, etc. But as I moved to Iceland mm. when I was 22 years old to study literature, to perfect my my artist and as a writer sometime between my you know my 22nd year and my 27th year my focus shifted for the third time in life and this time to music uh, mm. music has had always been my you know my big passion I always listened to music from a very early age and I love music but I always considered myself a hobby musician and a but a mm. professional listener but you've always been playing music throughout your life, right? You've always had a guitar handy. Yeah, there was always a guitar handy. Uh, I knew a couple of songs from an early age. And uh, I also studied piano uh, when mm -hmm. I was a kid. So I, I had the basics. And I always knew that I had a knack for singing. I just never perfected it. But whenever there was a school mm -hmm. play and, you know, none of the guys wanted to sing because, you know, guys at that age, they don't sing. Then I would say, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll do it. And I, you know, did a good job at it. So... I had a had a strong voice, uh, sort of mm. naturally, I guess. But the thought to actually make that my mission in life did not fully mm. occur to me until I was pushing twenty seven. So I graduated from uh, university with a degree in uh, in literature. I went home and put mm. that degree in my cupboard here, and I haven't touched it since. And that was at the age of twenty seven. For a lot of viewers, that might be kind of old. They might think. Yeah, I mean, a lot of my heroes, they they had you know become world famous musician and died by the age of 27 jim jimmy janice mm -hmm. kurt um you know jimmy hendrix exactly so yeah uh yeah but you know everything happens in its own time i guess and mm -hmm. uh, also i think what changed my focus to become a musician was also that i was in the right circumstances for it uh, before mm -hmm. i had not been in the circumstances where i was surrounded by great musicians so i guess your surroundings really affect you. And in Iceland, you cannot walk two, two meters outside without bumping into somebody who's uh, playing an instrument or, or writing music. So amidst this incredible melting pot of creativity yeah, that yeah. Reykjavik is, I just found uh, a good enough reason to just play, play music. So my hobby became more and more serious until the day I decided that you know, this is what I'm going to do. Very cool. And so you mentioned traveling being a huge part of your life. Now, I realize since you became a professional musician, so to speak, you've been doing a lot of touring. And uh, I imagine 
the touring sort of goes hand in hand with you still doing your sort of adventure seeking. Is that correct? It's perfect. Uh, it's a perfect, yeah. perfect life because then I can combine, combine my, uh, my passion for traveling and my passion mm-hmm. for music. It's, uh, I wouldn't want to have it any other way, which is also Absolutely. why I'm perfectly fine by, uh, you know, as a musician, you don't make much money. If I wanted mm-hmm. to make money, I would, you know, do something else, uh, anything else than music. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to survive on passion. You have to be content eating a lot of pasta some weeks when you don't have, <laughs> have many gigs. Yeah. So there's no really, there's no really no way to stay in this game without passion. But, but since uh, my my work now fulfills my, you know, my two mm-hmm. only like if, if I narrow it down, I have two mis- missions life, two passions in life. It's traveling and and creating. And now I get to create and travel, yeah. and I get yeah. to perform my creations, my songs to people. And uh, every mm-hmm. year I travel anything between 12 and uh, 20 plus countries where I play music to people. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I can imagine anybody who is trying to find their passion, so to speak. Um, it sounds to me that you've managed to integrate things from your past into this one sort of journey that it all falls into and you can sort of satisfy each of those passions at once. I guess so. I guess so. And also uh, the literature, you know, my, my you know, 10 years of trying to write books it allows me to write lyrics very easily. Yeah, right. So that's another another integration right there. Yeah. And also on my, on my uh, upcoming solo album, there's uh, some spoken poetry creeping in. So one track mm-hmm. would just be me and you know, some poetry. So I guess it, it all comes full circle in the end. Anything you do, mm-hmm. any uh, skill you acquire through, through the years, uh, when you find what you want to do, really want to do, and, and you stay at it, then all these mm-hmm. other things you did for all those years, they sort of become your allies, your, your skills. They creep in and, and help you to focus and then do, do a better job at what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Right awesome. Well, yeah. Jumping straight into the next question. Um, in terms of exposure, now we already c- covered that you do a lot of touring, but how do you get yourself out there as a musician to get people to notice you in this new digital age? Well, I'm torn because... At, at, the, at the core, I love creating music. I'm not a salesperson. And in this day and age where every musician is also, also needs to be their own manager. I mean, mm-hmm. some people have, some bands reach a certain level and, and, and uh, they hire managers to do these things for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and if, they're, if they become even bigger, they can hire better managers. And some of my bands mm-hmm. have, have managers, but you still, you're still required to every day Take, spend a little bit of your time out of your day to update social mm-hmm. medias and s- sort of mm-hmm. be a representative for your art. So it's not n- mm-hmm. doesn't um, it's no longer enough to just be a creator. You have to be a creator and a salesperson. And those two mm-hmm. things, heart and logic, they don't necess- they don't necessarily fit into the same mindset. Because when I write music, I need to be all about the heart. I need to be uh, not thinking but feeling. So it's a science of the heart rather than the mind. But then, then I have mm-hmm. to sort of switch gears totally and go on social media and I have to think about how to design a, a homepage and a smart Instagram strategy. And that's why I'm really torn mm-hmm. because that takes away time and focus that I would otherwise uh, use to make more and better music mm-hmm. or, or perfect my instruments. It sounds like a really challenging balance to strike. It is. I mean, I look at Neil Young, an old hero of mine, um, he was lucky enough to be discovered, so he had a management who did all mm-hmm. that boring stuff for him. So Neil Young, he could just sit on a couch and play guitar all day and come up with great songs. Mm-hmm. And uh, I realized, you know, there's many would-be Neil Youngs out there who never got heard because they had the, the they had the uh, the skills and they had the songs for it, but for some reason they never, uh, you know, no, nobody heard about them. Maybe. Yeah. If those guys and girls were living today with with uh, uh, Instagram, maybe they would have been heard, because mm-hmm. in a way, it's the the social media is very democratic in a way that everybody gets a chance of you know of uh, introducing themselves. So yeah, so absolutely. in a way, it's, and, it's a positive force at the core. Mm. And as you've meant, you've struck upon right now. I mean, it's not a problem that's unique to you at all. I guess many musicians are torn between this weird balance of you called it logic and heart. 
Uh, I think that's a really good way to put it, um, because in the end, you have to commoditize yourself, make yourself into a product and sort of match your product to a uh, demographic. And who's to decide who your music is made for, right? It can be quite a challenge. Commoditizing yourself. It's, I mean, it's great if, uh, and I've done this with some of my bands, we've studied uh, Google Analytics, we've studied uh, demographics of uh, the people who click on our YouTube videos, you know, how old they are and uh, what, you know, what gender, etc. That helps us understand who the people are listening for us, which is when, uh, when you then start to, you know, advertise your music. Or if you want to mm-hmm. be really smart about it, you can then adjust your music even more mm-hmm. to uh, to fit that the, the demographic demographic right. but again it's it's, it's a double edged sword because mm-hmm. i don't want to be writing music and creating art with a certain audience in mind i just want to be you know let it flow from what i have to say so the minute i start to uh, adjusting what i feel so that you know so that has a purpose of you know tickling the fancy of uh, certain demographics, then that's that's the, mm-hmm. the fine line where I cross, where I stop being an yeah. artist and I become um, a manufacturer. You see the difference? So yeah, that's that's a very powerful message or a powerful uh, sentence you just said there: manufacturer and creator. Exactly. Yeah, and I can I can manufacture music easily if if I wanted to write music for the, like let's say the Eurovision Song Contest, then you have a formula. Mm-hmm. You have you know uh, rules to go by, and you 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 create a very smart, intelligent piece of uh, you know songwriting, uh, mm-hmm. and which is potentially has a huge potential reach, and uh, you might might earn you a lot of money, but it mm-hmm. just goes against my instincts. And uh, although I have been producing for Eurovision, other for other people, I have been writing music on demand for TV and film, mm-hmm. and I can do a good job at it, but. It's, it always leaves me uh, a bit sort of hollow in my soul because my mission in yeah, life and I have to trade, I guess. Yeah, I have to accept this. Like uh, what makes me, f- fulfills me is to create something that, that I can feel. Um, mm. So, you know, that's that's why I'm, uh, I'm eating a lot of pasta and not pr- not writing for you original song <laughs> contest. But I'm actually I'm I'm confident that if you do follow your own creative instinct, there will be a tipping point where eventually you do get the recognition. I mean that's the that's the romantic way to see it. But you're absolutely right. There has to be a sort of balance as well. Because if you if you were to just manufacture music for people and not for yourself, then isn't that basically what modern pop music is yeah i mean that good point uh pop music is it's a factory it's a hit factory mm-hmm. and uh there's a lot of people with a lot of uh money in this hit factory because there's a lot of money to be had and mm. um, you have a lot of famous singers that they don't write their own music they're just guns for hire <laughs> they have you know a, yeah a interesting persona that they constructed they have a very nice voice and obviously good great musicians but uh but they're fronting uh, a catalog that they did not write, and a mm. catalog that, and you know, it's just a choice as an artist. Like, what what do you want to do with with your abilities? And my my choice has always been clear. But I don't. I I still respect the people who you know choose the other path because I recognize that they're very good at their craft, mm. and um, and I recognize they're very very skilled musicians. Uh, and that recognize they have other other callings that they are pursuing, and that's fine. Well, let's segue away from this a little bit. Um, so, making a living as a musician is obviously pretty challenging. Now, I recognize that you do have many projects in the pipeline right now. So maybe I'll just give you an opportunity to tell the audience about these projects you have going on. Well, my main band for the last ten years has been Austere. Um we had we had a viral hit on YouTube. We toured uh, more than thirty countries. We have uh, made six albums. Uh, we have a pretty decent following on both Facebook and other social medias, and uh, mm-hmm. like a high monthly listener number on on Spotify. So it's an established band. But mm-hmm. we the members have not really made any money from this band for the last ten years, uh, which mm-hmm. is why the struggle goes on. You have to reach sort of, a, you know. So like a 
you have to become even bigger than that to actually pay yourself a salary. Mm. Um, so, this, so yeah, my main project still does not pay any of my bills. Then I have my, my solo project, who is uh, becoming more and more uh, serious uh, because the, the music is becoming recognized. And mm. uh, when I go on tour with my solo project, I go on tour only, only by myself. So it's just me and the guitars. I don't have to pay string players. I don't have to pay for a for a, a tour a tour bus or like a minivan. I don't have to pay for a driver. Mm-hmm. I don't have to pay for a, um, all these things or like many hotel rooms. I can just you know sleep on a couch and save money that way. So I actually do make some money on the tours with my solo project, and mm-hmm. uh, hopefully right. hopefully that's going to grow as well. So it really being being a musician, especially in my in my sort of uh, you know. Uh, league uh, you have to have a l- couple of different projects that you get a little money here and there mm-hmm. and then I have my my passion projects which are mostly oriented in in, in the rock and roll and, and range into heavy rock and metal mm-hmm. and uh, this is just something I do because I have to uh, I do it because I I love making this kind of music I love it because I the guys I play with are some of my best friends and we get together and that's just the way we hang out. Like the music we make mm-hmm. there is an extension of our hangouts. We don't, you know, we don't play video games or watch Netflix or go play pool or get mm-hmm. drunk. We we hang out in the studio and make, you know, music that we love. So it's mm-hmm. like a... Basically, so- you just go and jam together a little bit and then you play the music that, that really your heart calls to you. Exactly. And we make good music, but I do rec- I do, do realize that uh, all these bands that I'm nurturing, my, my heavy rock bands, it's mm. very unlikely that I'll ever see ever see a cent, you know, because mm. uh, because we making albums are expensive because you have to you know buy equipment you have to, you know, uh, work in a studio so you can have the sound quality, sort of uh, uh, at, a, at a certain level and then and I have pretty high demands for everything I do so that means I'm not getting paid I'm paying to put, to put my music out, I'm, mm. I'm uh, and also when an album is ready I. I'm a good musician. I'm a good engineer. I can record music pretty well in the studio by now. But when it comes to mixing and mastering, that's a whole different ball game. Mm-hmm. So then I hire yeah. people who have who have perfected this skill, uh, mm-hmm. sound mixing and sound mastering, and that costs a lot of money. So these these yeah. these metal projects is just something that I do, that I pay money to put yeah. to the world. But I I don't get, I get some I get some uh, get some love for it mm-hmm. and uh, some respect and I get some oohs and ahs. But uh, yeah. not not any money. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine you need to delegate quite a lot, and especially when you have a band. By its very nature, you need to have many people involved. But now I'm curious about your solo project. Do you feel you need to delegate uh, mixing as well, or do you think solo project is something you could do entirely by yourself? No, uh, I just finished my second solo album, and uh, it's going to be released later this year. And I did everything myself. What's it called? Uh, it's called M I S S, or uh, I, I refer to it. To, I refer to it as the Mississippi album because I wrote all the songs Ooh. in a period of three weeks, three four weeks on the Mississippi River a couple of years back. Ah, uh, yeah, another one of your traveling adventures. Exactly, combining traveling and music, and uh, the more the more I seem to do this, the, the the more everything seems to sort of come home, come together, like we talked about before. Yeah. So uh, traveling and writing music is for me the ultimate experience. So when I'm not touring, I go on a long tour. I just spent five weeks in Mexico um, this winter, mm-hmm. where I uh, had a guitar and I wrote songs every day. So it's really, really these two passions really have merged in a beautiful way. But yeah, the Mississippi album, I uh, I did everything myself except the mixing part. So there I had to mm-hmm. uh, uh, pay pay a guy some money to really bring my my recordings to a a, a standard that I was happy with but then uh, when it comes to money I've been thinking about starting a Patreon for many years but I really mm. sort of when I went up to Mexico this winter I felt that I had a good excuse to do it because I felt that I, that I could maybe combine storytelling uh, of my travels as well as my music and uh, make a Patreon page where I where I share both the music and my traveling stories and we talked about earlier that I want to become a writer now I've sort of found this forum, it's called patreon.com, where I have about 40 people uh, pledging every month, a few dollars, but together it, it makes uh, so around $300, mm-hmm. 
which in my world is a lot. It pays for the studio I'm renting. It uh, it pays for a couple of packages of pasta, and then my phone bill. <laughs> so, yeah. but so these are people who admire my music and they love my stories. And some people actually been telling me they love hearing the stories behind the song more than they like the songs. <laughs> So once again, you see my old storytelling persona, my, my old sort of uh, dream of becoming a writer. I found a yeah. way to incorporate that into, you know, telling the stories of my music and through Patreon, mm -hmm. where I'm actually making money from, from my music and storytelling. I can imagine, yeah, quite a lot of people would be interested in the journey rather than the music itself. They say usually, like, if, if you buy a piece of art, then a part of that artist's psyche seeps into your home. And I think musicians is kind of the same way. And so it just it's natural for people to be curious about the man behind the music once they get into the music. And so if you have a story there waiting for people once they get invested in you, then uh, that's what the Patreon page is for, I guess. A lot of musicians, um, they have a persona or they have a... Uh like a uh, personality or a life that intrigues people. So uh, uh, the persona of the artist is a big selling point, maybe more maybe more in music than, than some other uh, categories. But then Hemingway, I mean, part of the appeal of reading Hemingway was knowing that he lived this crazy life. And then, you know, um, so, and coming back to what we talked about before, about me being uncomfortable about selling myself. That's always mm -hmm. been my problem. But... Here I found a way to sort of just do it naturally. I'm not selling myself. I'm just telling who I am. And luckily, I, mm -hmm. I live a pretty interesting life because I see a lot of mm -hmm. uh, peace. I mean, I travel a lot. I see the world. Mm -hmm. And so in a way, just by being who I am, keeping doing this, this uh, music that I believe in, that I feel I can represent, and not making a character or making a persona, I can simply just mm -hmm. show, show people who I really am. And... I'm so happy and fortunate to to have these patrons who think that's, that's enough. They they think you just you mm. know they just want to see the man behind the music, the songs, and they just want to see uh, the honest representation of the man between the songs. So just me being me, <laughs> I can finally make mo money just making the music I yeah. want to make, and be the be the, be who I am without putting you know going into a role of a salesman or, or you know or distorting mm -hmm. who I am in order to please people now mm -hmm. the few people who really like what I do have found me through patreon mm -hmm. so I'm um, yeah I can't I can't say enough how happy and grateful I am to have patreon and have these people who who simply are interested in what I do and uh, yeah. this is something I'm gonna try and build on for the next next years I think it's the for me the perfect uh, mm -hmm. perfect for, uh, formula and I think we're seeing this more and more in this new digital era where people are just putting their authentic selves out there the people who are being less censored about themselves they are the people that manage to garner huge followings as well so putting yourself out there just doing whatever craft you're doing people will find your craft like your craft but they'll also be invested in you your personality and whatever you do and I've always been very fascinated by this this aspect of this uh, this new digital age, where it allows a creative person to have multiple projects and have an audience that's ready to give each project a chance, so to speak. So I imagine your sort of avid fans or your followers, if you were to write a book about your Mississippi trip, they would probably be interested in reading that. Yeah, speaking of which, I'm just this morning working on a, a video comprising footage and uh, photos from the river where I'm actually telling the story about like a, about my trip trip down the river. Uh, mm -hmm. Not a book in this case, but like a 10, 15 minute video. Um, also, also what, what I'm happy about Patreon, uh, Patreon is that although you have social media like Facebook and, um, and uh, Instagram and on like Instagram stories, and although you being, people can be honest about who they are and just show, show you know, this, it's still kind of, because it's such a short format, it's easy where the pitfall is you can easily sort of uh, succumb to just saying, hey, look how fun I am having. Oh, look how crazy I am. Well, here I am just drinking my coffee. Like superficial mm -hmm. things with no, with no value. Mm -hmm. But when I spend a, a week editing uh, a video for my patrons, I can go into depth to, you yeah. know, and say something that really matters. I can say yeah. something of value and I can, you know, I can uh, not just post superficial pictures, but I can 
tell the story and bleed my heart into the story because I know these are people who you know will set aside time in their day and sit down and watch these videos and which is why they support me monthly so I can keep doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and share share the struggle. I would say uh, maybe that would be uh, one way to put it. Share the struggle, and maybe that can even motivate people to go through it as well. Because it can be quite um, suffocating, I guess, to just see people's successes all the time, and then you know your own measure for success becomes so extra astronomically high that you just feel like paralyzed from just trying something to begin with. And here with Patreon, because I have such a like a close relationship to them we we send messages to each other they comment mm. on the other thing i post and i answer so there's like a discussion going on and two times a month i do uh, online concerts streaming mm. concerts where they curate the song lists so that helps mm. me to gauge what songs they of mine that they like and mm. uh, i'm doing q a sessions where where i'm uh, being very honest about myself and my music mm. but it's a closed group so i'm not sort of uh exposing myself to you know a couple of thousand followers on facebook who might or might not care but i'm, I'm doing mm -hmm. it specifically to the people i know really care if you can think of anything that you wish you would have done differently if you could start over is there anything that comes to mind well i'm guess i'm gonna be giving you a, a very sort of uh positive answer and a and life embracing answer because my the last 15 years, well, especially the last 13 years, since I became a, well, 12 years since I became a full-time musician, has been fraught with all these mistakes that I made. Uh, mm. A lot of, a lot of energy and um, that's gone gone to waste, um, chasing cool de socks, uh, working with, you know, the wrong people, and uh, being mm. misled, and uh, and just try, trying to blindly find my way. Uh, in my craft mm. but sitting here right now looking back I would not change a thing because all mm. these mistakes and pitfalls they shaped what I'm doing today and so everything I do today is based on experience that I had to find figure out for myself so it becomes a very rooted and it becomes a very rooted in the art that I keep making so I would not change a thing and also like we talked about before that all this, the skills you acquire throughout your lifetime. Like in my case, I would, you know, try and become a writer for for ten years. That sort mm -hmm. of crept in again later into my my, uh, my my work as a musician. So all these all these things that I was, you know, all these uh, dead ends I was chasing, uh, connected to my music, uh, in my music uh, career in the last decade. Uh, mm -hmm. I I feel and know that somehow later it's gonna come full circle if I just if I don't give up if I give up it's going to be mm -hmm. all in way and this, mm -hmm. there were a couple of times you know for the last last years when I was so frustrated so sad so just done with it that uh, I damn nearly gave up and thought fuck it you know I'll, I'll become a teacher or I'll be you know I'll get a real job and you know and uh, have some you know some pesto with my pasta <laughs> but but I yeah. you know I, I just I stuck at it because deep down I knew that this is my only way to have a fulfilling life is to do mm -hmm. exactly what I want to do, which is create. And uh, mm. and being a creative person is is you're basically like if you're a musician, you you're creating songs from thin air, right? You mm -hmm. just you know you're just taking a, an idea or a feeling and something ephemeral, and you're making something substantial out of it. You're making a song that has you know uh, lyric notes uh, arrangements. But where does inspiration comes from? Well, it comes from what you feel and what you've experienced. So everything you've done sips into your music. And I don't think my music would have sounded as honestly and, and uh, fragile and, and uh, ma matter-of-factly as it does today had mm -hmm. I not had all these mistakes in the past. And uh, mm -hmm. sometimes I'm, I'm thanking my lucky star that I was not you know, uh, a child star or discovered earlier in my career. Because if I had been... Mm -hmm. Gain, so let's say I had gained some success uh, back when I started with one of my bands, then I would not have been ready for it. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm going to make, make, keep making mistakes, but on a bigger scale, and the fall would be higher. Mm -hmm. So I choose to think of, think of uh, you know, creation and life as 
as one mm-hmm. thing and uh, you cannot really separate them so now my my creation is an extension of the life I've been living and the life I keep living mm-hmm. and you and you most certainly been a very uh, successful creator throughout your life having produced multiple albums and um, multiple projects making music for TV and movies as well thanks yeah I mean uh, 20 plus albums and like you said uh, um, I've had the, the the chance to to try out movie uh, cinema and um, I've been uh, producing for 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 Eurovision uh, I've played pretty much every style of music there is uh, I played a jazz piano and a jazz bar I, I worked as a cover musician for some years to mm. just to earn some money on the side and um, all these different experiences uh, that in a way makes me also a better musician because when I sit down to do exactly what I would do then all these other skills that I've acquired it's like being an artist and you have a palette with different colors mm-hmm. on it and the more colors you have the more you know equipped you are to paint an interesting picture so in a way everything I do today is drawing on what I did yesterday mm-hmm. the good things and the bad things That's a beautiful analogy. I love that. <laughs> An artist with a palette with different colors. All right. Um, thank you so much for your time. I think actually that is a very positive note to end this with. Now, before I close this off completely, uh, I want to give you a chance to leave the world with a message. Um, think of it as if you were able to paint a sentence in the sky that everybody would see, what would be sort of your nugget, some, some message you want to bring to the world, some positive energy? What would it be? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, all it's a great question, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you caught me off guard there. All these, all these uh, Star Wars Yoda quotes pop to mind. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't, want, I don't want to go on a, on a cheesy note. Mm. Um, and I don't want to say something that you heard before either. Well, we can we can integrate some of the stuff that you've touched upon already which is integrate your mistakes or um don't don't be afraid to fail i mean i'm sure arnold said that at some point so it is cheesy but that's the beauty of it i want i want to bring some cheesiness out of you that you personally really love and stuff okay i hear you i'll expand on this so um the the sentence would be to be grateful because always there was Mm. you know a lot of times where i was like i said so heart uh, so um beating down discouraged doing what i'm doing and um and uh, yeah there was even depressions that were, were spurred by you know hardships in my musical careers and you know hardships with the bands and uh, but then as i came out of these these uh, periods of depression and uh, and i turned the scope and i thought man Here I am playing to you know uh, some hundred people every night who are loving what I do. I get to meet mm. people all over the world. I get to travel. Uh, I I only have colleagues that I work with that I love. There's not a single mm-hmm. colleague that I'm that I'm seeing on a d- daily or week- weekly basis that I just that I don't love being around with because as an artist, mm. you find the people you gel with, and and that becomes the, uh, uh, the the secret behind the art you make together. So. Uh, I'm not stuck in a job with people I don't like to to be around. So everything mm-hmm. in my mon- in my life except the monetary side is perfect. And even that monetary, mm-hmm. I'm not starving. I have I have roof over my head. So I turned the scope to see that man. I'm living exactly the life I set out to live. And mm-hmm. uh, and on days when I sort of lose my footing and I'm like, oh man, I wish I wish you know I wish could you do this? I wish you know more people would listen or blah blah blah. Then I just had to stop myself and and you know, look at everything I have and be grateful. Mm. And when I'm grateful, then uh, then I can keep on doing what I do and 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 uh, yeah. be at peace. So I think whatever you wherever you are as a creator in your career, then be grateful for what you have. Mm. Be grateful for every person that's willing to give you their time. Exactly. Be grateful that for people who give you your time. Be grateful for your, for your family, your parents, your siblings, mm-hmm. and uh, and all your friends who uh, support you in what you're doing, and the friends who don't support you, <laughs> what you're doing, they're not your friends. And and uh, I, I lost those people a long time ago. The the naysayers, yeah. the people who said, when are you going to get a real job? 
they obviously did not understand, you know, who I am. So, so they say so they sort of faded out from my life many, many years ago. And I'm just surrounded by people who say, "Hey, Raggy, nice man," and mm. uh, and then they'll they'll buy the next round of beers if I'm having a difficult month. Mm. That's amazing. Yeah, surround yourself with the people that encourage you. All right. Well, uh, hey, thank you so much for the talk. I really appreciate you taking the time to be on the show. Thanks for having me on. Um, I'll drop some links to your stuff. Uh, what's your Patreon page? Uh, Patreon.com dash Ragnar Olafsson. All right. And uh, any other Spotify things you want to highlight? Yeah. Uh, check out uh, Ars Tir and check out uh, my soul project Ragnar Olafsson. And I guess uh, I'll send you the links for all the other amazing uh, rock bands that I'm playing with. So you'll find that in the description. Thanks for, thanks, for, thanks for the chat, man. Really enjoyed it. Well, there you have it. Thank you so much. All right. Talk to you later. Cheers. Bye. I work hard every day for a working man's pay, but I'm letting loose tonight. I think I'm gonna rise up.